Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to part 3 of starting a fountain pen collection. Um, if you haven't checked out part 1 and 2 of starting a fountain pen collection, I will recommend you uh, start there, because it follows a timeline on uh, how I'm proceeding with the collection, and um, as each video progresses, uh, you will see uh, more changes and knowledge of uh, fountain pens uh, develop so uh, have a quick check of uh, part one and two if you haven't done so already um, I'd like to start by giving you an update of what the actual collection looks like and at the moment it's nine pens actually it was ten decided to uh, get rid of the Parker that was damaged uh, as I mentioned in the, in the last video um, I mean, uh, I, have, I have no problem now. If it, if it can be repaired, I'll try and repair it. If not, then I'll, I'll I'll get rid of it and use it for spares, whatnot. And and so as 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 you will see uh, when the video uh, progresses, that I will kind of add and delete uh, my pens uh, as we uh, find the perfect uh, collection point. Um, I mean, one thing I've noticed is actually all the pens are about the same length, but um, actually they vary definitely in weight. So, what I wanted to show you also is uh, the weight of these pens. And actually, I actually preferred a lot of heavy weights, but now after trying out a few, I see actually much prefer something in, in between the middle. So, here this is a, a Schaefer calligraphy pen so weighing in at 15 grams it's very light I mean it almost feels like there's nothing there followed by the Lamy Vista which is at 19 grams which is filled with ink already uh, this is the Twisby eco clear fountain pen also with inked so 22 grams so slowly building in weight but actually it's still quite lightweight we have a uh, 19 well 20 grams so this is kind of strange this is a, a stainless steel pen but it's only 20 grams and it's this one is plastic so it's quite a weight difference this one is a Parker 51 it's 19 or 20 grams so that's another one that is uh, quite surprising in weight and here's a Waterman Laureate it's at 25 grams again you wouldn't kind of tell by just looking at it what sort of weight it is here I'm not too sure what brand this is this is I don't think this was a brand it was just one of the gift sets and this weighs in at 31 grams and uh, this is quite nice finish to it black lacquer finish good weight to it and I will be testing that in the coming months here we have a pen from the bank it was uh, a free gift let's see what the weight it's also 30 it's a heavy pen 30 grams so it's almost light for light for uh, with this black one here and I think this may be the heaviest pen this is the Kaweco Supra it's at a massive 52 grams so right now um, I think I actually much prefer this kind of region of weight for pens uh, this is kind of heavy um, what but uh, as a a one-off light use I think this is this is fantastic these kind of weights but if you want an everyday use I probably recommend somewhere in between the 20 gram 20-25 gram somewhere in that uh, in that range this this is also okay I mean if you do a lot then I, I recommend uh, around the 20 gram or just a, a little bit under wanted to test uh, I, I don't want to test the the inks on 
all the pens basically so I'll pick out a few so today I'm going to test out uh, an ink on maybe four the pens so here I will use the Waterman Laureate Lamy Vista Parker 51 and this one is kind of strange I mean this one was uh, not too sure what the brand was I think it, it was one of those uh, purchase from the internet or well, actually I don't think it was the internet that uh, back in those days I think it was uh, 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 it was a TV ad advertisement no it was one of those ones where um, it was a, it was kind of a, a crazy advert where it, it kind of depicts the pen as an indestructible nib and you could actually you know throw it at a, at a dartboard you know or kind of pierce it through a can a can of soda and it was kind of like you know wh why would you advertise a pen like that I mean uh, I mean if you kind of really um, really bored with your pen I mean I, I probably su su suggest you get a new hobby I mean it's like uh, it's kind of crazy but back in those days you know people couldn't get to a pen store there was no internet and you saw this advertisement and you thought wow this this is uh, a pen and I think I have a clip somewhere, I mean I'll, I'll try and find it and uh, I'll put a clip in between so you can see it as well. Imagine doing this with your best fountain pen and doing this and then writing smoothly and effortlessly immediately afterwards. This isn't a trick or special effect, this is the classic pen set fountain pen with a virtually indestructible nib. The I mean as you can see from the clip it was um quite incredible but um, actually it sold I mean uh, I, I went out and bought one of these uh, after seeing that commercial so I mean to it to its testament it uh, survived I mean I didn't throw it at the dartboard I mean I was very tempted and and a few times I, I wanted to piss it through some uh, cans of soda but um, I, I didn't do it but actually I, I found you know after a good maybe 10 years and maybe more um, it, it's still writing quite well so I'll, I'll, I'll put it to the test um, today I'm using blue velvet 150 years celebration from Diamina uh, Diamina ink is uh, they they were founded in 1864 now relocated uh, well they uh, a UK base but they uh, uh, located in uh, Liverpool uh, but they relocated in 1925 uh, to the Aintree race course which is where they have the the Grand National uh, and the company it's I mean I really like the company I mean they really only change the formula if they really have to comply with legislation so and the pens are suitable for you know the inks are suitable for all pens and an interesting fact I was reading that uh, the royal blue version of the ink was used in April 2010 by uh, Obama and Medvedev on signing the nuclear arms treaty so if it's good for them it's good for me so let's have a look I mean I started off with uh, the Lamy first this is a, a Vista in the 1.5 so this is uh, the Diamina Blue Velvet. I mean, I wanted to see with the same test as I did in the previous, you know, with the drying times. And also, what I've done is I've added some really colouring in just to showcase what the colour actually looks like. And what I wanted to do to test the same ink in all four pens was actually just to see if there's any variations uh, in how the ink comes out and so far drying times is it's very good it's very short and nice thick lines from the 1.5 but maybe a little bit too thick now that I look at this this is the Waterman Laureate I mean I'm quite you know showing an appreciation for the uh, the medium lips now because you know I, I can write freely with this pen you know I don't have to worry about the uh, pen position you know how I'm holding the pen 
as, as I have to do with the uh, the Vista 1.5 because you know obviously how you hold the pen is, is going to how alter how the uh, pen strokes uh, will look and again drying times is almost the same I think it's uh, very fast one 15 seconds and it's all dried and there's a good ink color coming through with the waterman Parker 51 is he uh, it's a very fine nib so it looks very elegant I mean you don't see the color as much I mean it, it almost looked like it's a lighter shade of blue but actually it's uh, it's the same ink I mean managed to fill these with the blue velvet in the same way so so ensured that uh, all pens were basically using the same ink at the same time just get that back in here um, I mean with the Parker 51's uh, drying time is extremely fast I think uh, that's something to do with the fine nibs uh, could well be that it's what well, obviously there's less ink so that would make sense and uh, and actually I found the the nib be very smooth actually so that was kind of interesting that actually for an old pen that it's still writing really well um, I almost you know wanted to get rid of this pen but actually it's a good pen here to test against the uh, some of the newer pens uh, this is where I started to test this uh, this old indestructible pen as you saw from the clip and um, and here I wanted to show you some differences because actually I made two and both of them are with the same pen with the same ink but the first one was pre I mean I've, I've left it for quite some time and I just started to if I can just show you that also used the a cartridge converter and I just wanted to test a, a tiny little bit of uh, ink and um, started to write and I thought well why why is the color so different this one is kind of light and this one is almost dark and then I realized actually I didn't clean the uh, pen properly so it may it may well have had a, a black ink uh, uh, in the last years and it's kind of dried up and and basically it's, it's slowly to come it's coming through now that I've added the, uh, the blue velvet and actually it's changed the color completely as you can see and so what I did I went and washed and cleaned the nibs uh, that's also uh, something I wanted to show in this video as well that actually look it, uh, it's coming out a different color it's uh, this is more closer to the color that it should be uh, with the blue velvet and actually it was, it was quite nice it's a medium nib it writes really well and drying time is slightly longer I think uh, maybe 11 seconds 11 12 seconds uh, there's a little bit of a more of a smear than with the other pens so I mean this is this has got good ink flow uh, it writes well it's not scratchy and actually with the test with the four pens with the Lamy Vista Waterman Parker 51 and this cheap pen and I actually prefer the cheaper pen so that was uh, quite uh, interesting results and uh, what I wanted to show you was actually the cleaning pens I mean I've seen some crazy internet videos whereby the guy is using uh, some cartridge syringe type uh, uh, filler to kind of flush out but um, for me I still prefer the uh, the basic uh, way of cleaning a pen which is just to kind of press and squeeze this is a simple way I mean if you have a lot of XF ink I highly suggest you 
put that back in but here there was only a, a, a small amount uh, for me to test the pen I almost used it as a uh, as like a dip pen to just to test out for that one page so here it will take some time you just flush it forward and back a few times and then after a while it should get a little bit less as you can see it's slowly cleaning up a little bit more but having said that it just could keeps on continuing so th this takes a little bit of patience um, this one I'm not too sure how you're going to remove this uh, thing uh, this uh, I think it's a uh, inbuilt Parker anyway this will take a, a little bit of cleaning so um, I will continue to clean when the video goes offline uh, I will continue to clean uh, take my time and clean this pen the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, well I mean you it, it will be very hard to take all your contraptions with you if you uh, uh, travel a lot uh, if you uh, need to uh, uh, fly a lot uh, partic in particular um, so I, I'm not too sure how this uh, gentleman was going to carry his uh, his syringes I mean uh, I mean I know it varies from airline to airline you're allowed to carry syringes and needles and stuff like that but um, and also if you label your bottles uh, correctly um, then you should be able to carry those but um, uh, I mean uh, I mean passing through security with some bottles labeled uh, Diamina Oxblood and uh, MB Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, I think uh, people would start to question, you know, what 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 the purpose uh, for that is. I mean, if you kind of explain that it's for your fountain pen, that you need uh, syringes and uh, red blood and uh, like uh, ink, and it's uh, it, it's it's going to be very hard to explain. So, um, just a normal, you know, just pre-fill it. I mean. The, the problem with air travel is that um, uh, when you're flying uh, th there are chances of leaking uh, with your pens so I mean this is uh, caused by the cabin pressure change and uh, it's because the ink flows with the capillary action and gravity and uh, and that's where you're gonna get some uh, ink leaking uh, but most modern pens will be okay I mean to make sure remove the uh, the ink from the pen and clean it or you can uh, travel with the ink full up uh, filled up uh, because this is because you know most people think well uh, that's kind of why would you want to do that if you're uh, advising to uh, empty the ink but it's uh, because it's the air inside within the cartridge or converter filler that uh, the air expands is causing the leak you know forcing the excess uh, you know for it to go somewhere so it's one of the reasons why that the most people don't uh, think about to uh, fill the pens uh, fully and also keeping the pen upright so that's pretty much common sense and if you um, if you have to use it during the flight then preferably I think uh, before takeoff or after uh, not not during landing and and you know where the 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 cabin pressure changes i think that's where where you're going to see uh, pens leaking but on a whole i think uh, modern pens won't have the problem but just you know if you're carrying a whole lot of pens and they're all inked up then uh, there may be uh, some problems with some of the pens so that's uh, uh, my kind of advice for you on that um there's not been any pen case purchases I mean I'm still on the lookout uh, same with uh, converters uh, in my next video I will hopefully add two more pens to the uh, to the collection um, and hopefully we'll uh, try out more ink uh, okay hope to catch you next time